Stuart, um, it's wonderful that you've been able to talk to the uh, to, to many of tomorrow's company's members today. We've been talking today about employee ownership and the difference that it makes. And uh, it's very interesting to hear you say uh, what difference it's made in some of the best decisions that you saw John Lewis make in the time that you were chairman. I think the most telling thing is the long-term vision that our partner directors, employee directors, uh, had at John Lewis. You might think that they would be there trying to rein back the management and say, no, let's share as much profit now as we can and, and uh, get the benefit. Whereas invariably they were focused on uh, where is the business going in the long term? Is it going to be successful in the long term? So that at the time when we developed uh, the John Lewis internet site, we were also redeveloping Peter Jones, spending £103 million, pounds, which is a huge amount of money, uh, to redevelop that profits down while the work was going on. And the employee directors were absolutely there saying, investing in the internet, yes, we can see the purpose of that, and it's the right thing to do. So the view that it's a sort of surrogate trade union uh, voice which is going to hold a company back in my experience, it's just the opposite. It's a force for long-term vision. And you uh, captured it very well in, in your phrase, that the power of, of we. You gave a rather nice example from Edinburgh. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's the, the department store in Edinburgh is right in the centre of the city. Um, and like all department stores, it goes a bit dead after Christmas when all the customers' credit card bills come in. Um, and the managing director took a group of partners from the selling floor and said, don't go to your normal jobs for the next week. Work as a team, come up with some ideas as to what we could do better uh, in, uh, in the year ahead. And um, they went and they looked at uh, the trade patterns through the day. And they came back at the end of the week and said, we've got an idea. Um, here we are in the center of the city, surrounded by offices. Our busiest time of day is over lunchtime when everybody from the offices pours out and wants to do a quick bit of shopping. Uh, and the manager Joe said, yes, yes, we know that. Uh, uh, what are you saying? He said, well, one third of us are off having lunch. And he said, well, yes, we're in three break patterns and um, one third of us are having lunch. What are you saying? And they said, we should give up lunch. Uh, we should have a late morning break, an early afternoon break. But during that time when we're at, we're at our business, everybody should be on the selling floor uh, serving the customers. Um, they took a vote on it in the shop. It was carried overwhelmingly. Um, and I went up a few weeks later and said, well, how's it all going then? Uh, and partners said, we absolutely hate these late morning breaks, early afternoon breaks. Our stomachs have no idea what they should be doing. But have you seen the trade figures? Mm. This, I think, is the power of we, when an organization, when people feel it's our business, and I'm prepared to do something that, personally, I really don't like, mm -hmm. uh, but it's good for the business, and look at what the positive effect it's had. If businesses can get that sense of employee engagement, and it's not just through the John Lewis share ownership, uh, uh, um, uh, it's really engaging your staff in whatever way you can to get the power of we, then you create happiness, you create a sense of full engagement, and you create good profits as well. That led us on into a discussion about why there wasn't more employee ownership, and indeed, was there anything government could do to encourage it? What's your view on that? Well, <laughs> the John Lewis model is Actually, uh, yes, it is about share ownership, but it's more about a way of thinking uh, of, um, uh, of engaging your staff. And you could do it, um, you, you can uh, hand the business over, but that's going to be family businesses where the next generation doesn't want to take it on. Um, one can see that happening. Maybe uh, entrepreneurial business where the founder wants to spread uh, the ownership rather than holding it himself. Um, but in, in many cases, it will be just uh, actually engaging through limited uh, um, share ownership for the benefit of, uh, of, of employees. And I would always say not actually handing shares uh, to a particular generation, but holding a trust 
which for whichever generation it is, um, the, the dividends on those shares will go to the people working there at the time. Because otherwise, as one sees at Royal Mail, um, uh, post office staff were given shares and then they were free to sell them. So the idea that people working in Royal Mail all had a real interest in the success of the business was a very limited phenomenon. Um, whereas if you put the shares in trust, then you've got a permanent engagement of everybody working there that they, if the business is successful, they share in that success and therefore they bring their ideas to make the business even more successful. We also talked about uh, the emerging generation. Um, inevitably, the, the millennial label was used. Um, you've had some uh, experiences of, 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 of talking to students, which uh, rather discouraged you. On the other hand, um, we've heard other stories of research which suggest that employee ownership might appeal to the millennial generation. What did you make of all of that? Yes, I mean, I think uh, um, more young people coming into business are looking for more than just a job. Uh, uh, obviously, people have got to be properly paid, but I think that uh, it, apart from in certain sectors, people aren't looking to maximise their pay. They want to be paid adequately, but they want to get satisfaction mm -hmm. out of the job. And I, the engagement which they feel and the integrity of the business, I think the, the morality, the values which a business espouses are going to be increasingly important. That People will say, I don't want to come to work and be expected to do things which I wouldn't do in my private life. I certainly found that at John Lewis. Uh, we, if I talked to some of our quite senior people that we recruited from other businesses, and they'd say, at John Lewis, I find my personal values and the company's values are absolutely in line, and that's why I'm gonna stay here. It was a real, not just a recruitment factor, but a retention factor, which, at a time of scarce talent is extremely important. And I suspect that's something that more and more companies are, are, are going to have to find ways of responding to. Stuart yes, Hampson. absolutely. Stuart Hampson, thank you very much. My pleasure.